welcome back to the Bad Clients Podcast. My name is Emily Wise and I'm your host. I'm here with Nancy Watkins for episode number six. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm an accountant by day. Um, I have started my own firm about two years ago now, and we are nationwide, which is really, really exciting. Um, And then I also do one-on-one coaching for bookkeepers who are looking to build their business and build it successfully. So we're really excited. I've got, um, I'm up to five employees now, so... To, in two years, that's awesome to me. <laughs> that is awesome. That's a big deal. So. It is. It is. We're a six-figure, multi-six-figure firm now, which, you know, people just think that that's absolutely crazy that you can do bookkeeping and build a successful business to be able to replace your income and not have to have a nine to five. And so that's, you know, it, it's been really exciting to be able to, build this business to get to know our clients and to get to sh- now show others that you can do it too. Yeah. So I think it's that's cool that you're doing the coaching part of it too. So, do you have like a physical offices or are you online or both? Um, we do everything virtually. So we work remotely for some of our local clients. We do meet them occasionally if needed. But with our clients that we have nationwide, that um, we've honestly never met most of them in person. That's okay. Um, so we do Zoom calls and we work um, every with everything remotely. So therefore, there's no need to be in person, which is awesome. Um, a lot of bookkeeping, accounting, CPAs even are going 100% remote because it gives you that flexibility to be able to work anywhere. Mm-hmm and not have to be stuck in an office every day. So, but it's been really, really fun so far. Nice. And sounds like you have a good team of people that you're with. I do. Supporting I've you been, that's awesome. Absolutely. I have been so blessed um, because it's like they found me. I didn't have to go out and find them. Um, I had talked to a few people here locally and I was told about one girl and I all I did was message her and she was like yes I want to work with you like now <laughs> and so I was like awesome and then um the other ones they came to me as well they heard about what I was doing where I how far I've come in such a short time frame um one actually came from a, another CPA that was re- having to reduce hours and wanted to fill hours so she was like hey do you have any room for her and she's been absolutely fantastic. She's completely taken over some of our accounts and is doing a fantastic job. Nice. And then the other ones came too. So it's, yeah, I've been blessed by this just progressively growing in such an awesome direction. That's, you know, and when you, when you have a good team like that, that's enthusiastic about what they're doing and they like it and they know that you appreciate them, Yes. It's, that's a huge thing because that's a dynamic that's so hard to, to find sometimes and yeah. so hard to make. So. Exactly. And I make sure to tell them all the time how thankful I am. And they're like, <laughs> all right, all right. You know, you said it enough, Nancy. We, we know we rock. We know we're awesome. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, it's, I've, I've had those bad bosses mm-hmm. in the past. And so I made sure to always, in my head and in my heart those things to fuel me to be a better boss and better employer yeah. now that I have my own company and I I like to make sure that they know how much I do appreciate them and then if something's wrong we can talk it out and everything's there but they've been offered other jobs and they've chosen to stay with me which to me is even you know a more a big thing a better thing for me and I'm like you know that makes me feel good too that yeah you know, they don't want to leave <laughs> yeah that's that's big because if somebody's loving what they're doing enough that they're getting recruited and they're like no exactly. I'm cool. no I'm good I'm good yeah. I'm here. that's awesome so it kind of tends to make up if you have a client that's not so great if your team is good <laughs> you always have somebody to fall back on right 
Yeah, yeah. So we've had several um, clients that were were good, and then we've had several that um, we've had to unfortunately um, part ways with a few. Mm-hmm. So some mar- my decision and some was theirs, and I was very grateful to get that email and letter to let me know that they were terminating services. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> For a lot of people, it's like devastating because. I can't afford to lose a client, but you know, in the long run, it just saves you so much energy and time and emotions and everything. Right. Well, and two, one thing that I've realized is that certain clients that are, that bring negativity and drama or stress to us, it bogs us down and it, you know, it's mental blocks in our head and creates that bad juju Mm-hmm. And so we've seen that when those clients have gone away, that the good juju comes and we've seen an increase in our business when we let those bad clients go. And so, you know, it's now being able to say, okay, you're not our ideal client to work with and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, because now you've just opened up room for, more of our ideal clients and so we're like see ya yeah bye <laughs> I mean, so, at first I was like oh I can't afford to lose you I'll do anything to keep you mm-hmm. and then I got to the point I'm like this isn't worth it anymore I mean it's they're making me go even more gray than I already am <laughs> yeah I well I named mine after my kids so like all that is not thin hair. It's actually gray. Um, yeah, my seven-year-old says that mommy, those are those are gray straights, is what he calls them. Mommy's gray, gray straight. <laughs> I call them my glitter highlights because I'm not fabulous. <laughs> I like that one. I think I saw it on a meme. I I didn't come up with it myself. I have to admit. <laughs> so, so tell me about your your favorite bad client story. <laughs> all right, so I have one, or I had one client that um was a local client and at first i was really excited because i was introduced to this client um by another friend of mine and i was like yes i will be more than willing to help you out because i was pretty new into my business well i found out quickly how much she doesn't trust anybody Mm -hmm. and she let me know that in every phone call i had with her you know i don't trust you I'm like, you, you need to trust me. I mean, we've got to work together to make sure your finances are where they need to be and that your books are accurate and up to date. And she's like, well, you need to come over here and connect these accounts for me. I'm like, you can connect them yourself and I can walk you through how to do it. She goes, no, 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 no. you can come over here and do it for me. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm kind of in meetings today. She was like, um, I'll be here until three o'clock. You need to be here before then. I was like, no. Excuse me? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And she was working with her previous CPA and we were making sure that all her books are up to date, all of her categories were correct, which a lot of it was not. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we found is, you know, people think that they can do their own books a lot of times. And some people can, don't get me wrong, some people can. But a lot of people don't have time to or they think that should be this and it's not it should be that whatever so we had to do a lot of corrections with her and she told me that I was wrong I didn't know what I was doing I was like mm, sorry I have over 10 years of experience I've I've worked with clients like you before I do know what I'm doing yeah and um so then she was like nope nope mm-mm. she goes I I just don't trust you Okay. So it's like, we're going to see how this goes. Yeah. Well, about four months into it, I was working with her really good. We prepped her taxes because I do taxes for all of our clients. And I noticed that her previous CPA didn't take into account for certain things and her return was incorrect. And Uh so I let her know this and that we needed to amend her return for the previous years. And oh my gosh, I mean, you thought I just blew a bomb on this lady. And I'm like, no, 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 
I said, you would actually be getting more money back because it's an LLC and it goes on to their personal returns. And yeah. with what he didn't do, I said, you, you just lost out on a bunch of deductions. Mm -hmm. I said, so you just missed out on almost $30,000. That's a lot of money for some people. That, yeah. Grand, oh, yeah. right under thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> I was like, "This is what you're missing." That's a whole year of income for some people. I know. Yeah. That's what I thought. And she but was. No, I was she wrong. was mad about having to do. She was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong that you know she trusts she trusts her other CPA because you know they've been working together forever. Well, why didn't? But she I was wrong. Why was she looking for somebody else? Because she moved here and he was where they used to live. And I, I said, okay. So she wanted someone local. Okay. Okay. Um, but yet she, you know, okay. Anyway. Uh, okay. So I brought it to her attention. I highlighted everything and I made notes on it. So I presented her with all the documentation to support these incorrect transactions on there yeah. and support that, you know, you are, technically missing this amount of money. Nope. I'm wrong. He says I'm wrong because he didn't want to do the amendments for her taxes. And so I'm wrong. So I don't, she didn't trust me again. Okay. And then she refused to pay her invoices. She was like, Nope, you know, these are wrong. So I'm not paying it. Nope. I don't think so. I'm like, you need to pay your invoices. Yeah. You can't just I, not The work's pay. been done. The work's been performed. I've provided you with the information. No, refused. Refused to pay the invoices. I was like, all right, wow. learn from there. So now everybody I work with, they prepay. Mm -hmm. They no longer are able to pay, you know, for me to send invoices and then pay later. Yeah. Everybody's prepaid now. Yeah. And so far I've had no issue with that part. <laughs> More and more businesses are converting over to that type of payment plan or payment structure because it's just easier. You don't have to hire a collections agency or an accounts receivable department to right. take down invoices that weren't paid. Um, it's just so much better if, if you can work it, it out. Is. Yeah. It is. Um, I mean, I have a couple clients that have been, have become long-term clients now. Um, that I've made arrangements with, but uh, everybody else, you know, they're on automatic bank drafts the first of the month now, um, or they have five days they can choose from, from the first to the fifth of when they want their payments to come out. Nice. And so it works out really well now. So, yeah, I mean, I, I learned to growing my business, you know, I made my mistakes up front and I learned, thankfully I've had a lot of support to be able to build my business the way I have. And so quickly, so, you know, I've, I've made those mistakes. I've learned from some other people's mistakes as well. Um, and I, I did learn through my bad clients at the beginning of what I want to take on and what I don't want to take on anymore. Mm -hmm. And now I have the option to choose what kind of clients I want to work with, which I mean, in two years, I think that is really awesome to be able to do because I know people that are two years that are still having to take pretty much whatever they can get. Yep. Um, so no, it's been a lot of fun. So um, did, did she ever end up paying or did you just kind of like write it off and say, whatever? I just had to write it off because I was wow. like, you know, it's not worth, it's not worth my time and energy. And if I took her to small claims court or whatever, or even paid a collection agency to go after it, I'm going to end up losing money on it. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I'll just take the hit and just use it as a learning tool and move on because I'm not going to let a bad client keep me down for, for long because I've got other stuff I need to tackle and put my energy into. Exactly. Like bad clients tend to teach us some of the most valuable lessons. Like, they do. Good clients do too. But I have to learn things the hard way every single time. Yeah. And so for people like me who like beating my head against the wall, apparently, like bad clients <laughs> are so valuable. So, because yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really stubborn. And yeah, you mentioned like 
people like using you as their scapegoat. So are people actually trying to blame like their accounting errors on you? Or so I have one client that um, they have to get audited every year because it's a nonprofit. Oh. And I mean, nonprofits are a bear of themselves, honestly, mm -hmm. for accountants to deal with, um, which is why a lot of accountants don't do nonprofits or you'll find certain accountants that specialize in nonprofits only mm -hmm. because they take up so much time and energy. Well, this nonprofit had a bookkeeper on site for many, many years and she all of a sudden up and left one day and then we met each other a few months later and we got brought on with um, them to clean up the books and to take care of their books moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, come to find out that the on-site manager wasn't as forthcoming to the board of directors and, um, you know, any issues that were going on with the audit and stuff like that, that was wrong, all of a sudden was our fault. Okay. And I'm like, no, that's not my fault. I didn't do that. Mm, I can't answer that because I don't know what she, the previous person did. And they're like, well you're handling this now. So yeah, I'm handling it now. I said, so moving forward, I'll be able to tell you every little detail about your account. I said, yeah. they're trying to figure out what happened without documentation to back up these previous transactions. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Yeah. So, and you know, threw us under the bus of certain transactions being done incorrectly. I'm like, but me, but you know, like, look, this is the date of the transaction. This is when you hired me. Yeah. I didn't do it. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm their easy way out to not have to explain something, you know, it's Nancy's fault, um, or JNS's fault, which is the name of our company. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, because we're now the ones taking care of their books, we were the easy ones to blame for whatever the wrongdoings were of their previous bookkeeper. So, but I make sure I have good notes and I make sure that I have <laughs> documents in place. That way I can corroborate what we do yeah. and, you know, make sure that I can explain what we need to explain for the auditors. And you're, you mentioned before um, we started that you had a, that you actually had a degree in healthcare. And I think that that really set you up because in healthcare, because I worked in healthcare too for a lot, a long time, it was, Document, 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 all the time, document everything. CYA, I was yeah. taught, that was one of the first things I ever learned was to CYA for yourself because mm -hmm. if anything ever goes south, you want to make sure that your butt is covered, especially in healthcare with HIPAA and all of those laws that come into place. Mm -hmm. um, and even with accounting, I mean, I'm held to certain rules and regulations and ethics codes, just oh, like yeah. a CPA almost, um, I mean, they have different ones that they have to follow too. But even still, I mean, <laughs> the board of accountants can come after me any day. Yeah. And so I'm gonna make sure that my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed and everything is above board and accurate and the way it needs to be done. And so, you know, those bad little words that you call me or <laughs> you know, trying to blame stuff on me, Ain't gonna no. work with me there, honey. <laughs> no, because you've got yourself covered. And for anybody who doesn't know, I think it's pretty common knowledge CYA is covering your ass. So we talked about these people, you know, you learn from these bad clients and stuff. What was the big humongous takeaway that you learned from the I don't trust you lady? Um, I learned from that experience that I need to be more upfront with my clients and I need to be able to convey that their trust and their financials are my number one priority because I don't care what they do at Starbucks. I don't care what their habits are like that. I want to make sure that their books are accurate and up to date for them to be able to make those big decisions for their businesses. So being able to understand and learn exactly how to convey to our clients that you know they can trust us, that we have their uh, benefit and you know their best. I'm looking for 
um, their best interests yeah. at heart, right up front in the first gate has really, really been for me, the biggest takeaway from it because now I've become what I, <laughs> some people call me, um, the massive closer because <laughs> I can now close on a, on a, the first call with a client. Um, That's good. And, and like, do you put stuff in your marketing to that effect or because a lot of people say you can't close on the first call because of this and this and this and this, they don't know who you are. I mean, and I'll link to your, um, you know, your Facebook page, your Instagram, yeah. your, your website and everything in the show notes. But yeah. Um, no, I haven't put that in my marketing yet. I know we're in the process of probably going through a rebranding here soon. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think when we rebrand that that'll be part of it. Um, I'm pushing a lot of that through our coaching mm -hmm. that we're doing is I'm actually going on a three day intensive next week. We're putting on Nice. And in that, we're going to do a mock sales call to show our potential students and the people that are in our intensive with us how to do a one call close. Um, because you'll hear so many people that you need to do the, you know, diagnostic review, which I mean, I do, mm -hmm. but I've learned techniques of how to ask those specific questions that, and those pointed questions mm -hmm. on that first call to where I can get them at the end of that call asking me how much it costs to work with me. Nice. So to be able to do that in two years <laughs> to me is awesome because I yeah. was not ever a salesperson. I hated sales, but now I can close people in that first call and sign them up and have them onboarded in two days. See that's and that's wonderful because people, people who are talking to you are generally needing to hire an accountant. I or they, just, they don't think they do, and then they realize by the end of that call that they really do. Yeah, <laughs> like there's, there's usually a reason they're on the phone with you, right? Um, exactly. I used to sell exactly. mattresses, and I hate salesmen. Absolutely hate it. I'm the one that walks to the car dealership like, I've already got financing from my bank. I've looked at the car online. I know what I want. I go in. I'm like, just do this. Don't talk yeah. to me. Exactly. Um, and so I could really feel that when people were coming in because mattress shopping sucks. And so they come in and, and it's like, there's a reason you're here. Why are you here? <laughs> what do you need? And then I would get hugs from people who came in grumpy and they were so excited about a freaking mattress. And I know. And that's, you know, so many people think that accounting is not fun and accounting's boring. You know, they don't want to have to do it. They don't want to have to worry about it, but that's where it is fun to me. It's, mm -hmm. I look at it as a puzzle. And so every day presents us new challenges um, every day I get to solve a new puzzle. And so the way that I've been able to sell it per se to our clients is just through that arena and make it fun. Like you said, by the end of that call, I have people crying sometimes because they're just so excited to finally have someone that's in their corner that knows what they're doing and they don't have to worry about it. And then I have those people that are jumping up for joy afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I get the yay! whole mattress. Yes. Yeah. I have exactly. somebody somebody good. <laughs> exactly. See, yeah. I've been on the other side of, um, you know, I'm working as a virtual assistant for companies, and I had to deal with their accounting people, a big box accounting, I guess you can call it. Mm -hmm. and he was paying for bookkeeping, and they wouldn't do bookkeeping. So they were dealing with this, this accounting firm, and they were paying for bookkeeping, and then all the book, every single transaction was, ask the client and I would have to go in and try and figure out what they were. And like, I had a couple years of college for an accounting degree, but I never finished. And I really didn't know what all the rules were. And I'm so afraid I had enough school to know that you can really screw up. And I would like try to meet with them and be like, what, why am I doing this? And, and we'd have this meeting and I'd be like, well, this is this and this and this and this. And if I don't know what it is, I Google it. Why don't you do that? I mean, he's, it was a software developer. It was all related to software. Like how, how, how come I'm doing this? Well, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. And that's one thing that I've noticed with a lot of bookkeepers or accountants or even CPAs is that they don't take the time to, you know, learn their clients. Mm -hmm. And so then people, 
Ebom do it to other bookkeepers or accountants. And they're frustrated because they've had this experience with someone else. And so then you're getting the crap up front yeah. from somebody. And you're like, okay, how do I combat this? Because like that, you know, you, you don't want anything in your ask client. You don't want anything in your ask accountant accounts. But, you know, I have one client that honestly, we have to use the ask client because his bank account, like certain banks do not give good information. So mm -hmm. um, if you try to go log into a bank account and there's, he writes checks a lot, but it doesn't put the check image in there. So we are constantly having to ask, Hey, what did you write this check for? Hey, what is this for? And I've tried getting them to switch and I'm like, dude, do you realize how much additional time you're costing us because you won't help us? Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, I told him, I said, every time you write a check, just send us a quick note. Hey, I just wrote a check for this amount to this and this is what it's for. So what we've started doing at the end of the month now is we'll actually send him a spreadsheet and I'm like, I need you to go right here. Mm -hmm. I need you to put what this was for and then just send it back to me. And it's helped alleviate a lot, but I was like, dude, oh, I bet. you, you got to work with me a little bit here. I don't understand why banks haven't caught up with this yet. Um, it's more so credit unions that I've noticed that are, that are doing this. Um, cause like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, the big, the big banks mm -hmm. are on par, are good to go. You know, they let you see 18 months of history of images. And when you make a deposit of a bunch of checks, it'll show you all the checks that are included in that one deposit. You're not having to go hunt down anything, mm -hmm. but it seems like the credit unions are honestly just not there yet. And I don't know if they want to. And we've gotten a lot of our clients to switch to better banks. And now we have a list of recommendations for clients nice. to know where they're at of different banks that we recommend that they utilize um, mm -hmm. based on their type of business even, which is really neat. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's where we kind of take that extra step to help our clients and, and through learning all of our bad experiences that we've learned so far, um, we've been able to bring those additional services and extra value to our clients. And so far they've been happy with it. Love the availability and the upfrontness. We're like, Hey, yeah. this sucks. I'm sorry. But you know, for us to be able to do what we need to do efficiently, you need to do something else. <laughs> Yeah, it's well taxes and and especially taxes and accounting. It's also scary because like you don't want to get audited and you don't want to do it wrong and yeah. So have you found that having all of that in place, like the little extra things to help your clients and being upfront, have you found that you have less bad clients as you go on now? Yes, especially being able to identify the kinds of clients we want. Um, because I know what I don't want to deal with anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and I know the kinds of clients I don't want to work with. And so being able to promote and market ourselves in a certain way to target our ideal audience, um, it has helped us drastically. It's now created an environment in our business that is plentiful and exciting um, and we love to talk with our clients. I love going to visit our local clients. I love hopping on Zoom calls with our clients. We get excited to talk with our clients, see what's going on, check in on them to make sure that everything's good with their business, that they're growing the way that they want to, that their financials are headed in the direction that they want. And, you know, we've actually become friends with some of ours that, you know, I'll go and we'll see it events and we'll hang out and everything like that. So that has been so amazing to me. Nice. And, you know, I got asked to go visit one of our clients out in California, which was awesome. I'm like, sure, I'll come. Which part? <laughs> visit. Um, she's over down in LA. Okay. Did you go to so, Disneyland while you were there? No. Oh. Um, I went to, the, I ended up going to the beach. <laughs> we're going to go back because we wanted to take our kids. So yeah. we'll go to Disneyland, but no, just going down and walking through the Hollywood streets and going to Rodeo Drive and all that stuff was. I grew up in California and I've never been to Hollywood. Um, 
That was wow. I've gone to San Diego and San Francisco before, but I've mm -hmm. never been there, so it was really neat. Yeah, I was more of a San Francisco person before the feces happened, um, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we were there in June. It wasn't that awful. We went to a Giants game. We had a lot of fun. But oh, there um, you go. yeah, my my husband grew up down in LA though, so mm -hmm. he's he's been all See, over. There. I couldn't deal with the traffic. Like I would not want. I honestly, I you kept paying me to live in LA. <laughs> no, I live in Iowa now. Like we don't do traffic. Um, so when he's driving through LA, I'm like this because I just I can't look out. I'm afraid somebody's gonna hit us and. <laughs> I get all anxious. We I was just like, Uber, please, Uber, please. <laughs> if I go to a city that's big, I don't drive at all. Like Uber, public transportation, or in California, my dad drives, and I just pretend that he's not having road rage and try to ignore him. <laughs> what is your target client anyway? In case one of them is listening to the podcast, uh, what kind of people do you are your favorite types of people to connect with and, and service? Um, so we are pretty much solely working with actors now because mm -hmm. um, they're crazy just like me uh -huh. and they, they need so much help because with their projects that they do, they need to know what they're, what they've got coming in, what they're spending per project. They love to look, know their profit margins in an instant. Mm -hmm. And so we've really started focusing on working with a lot of them and, you know, I get to joke around with them and I have built a rapport with so many of our current clients that I'm like, okay, I know what you're like. I can pretty much pinpoint exactly what kind of contractor someone is right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And to me, I, I can talk to them in a way now. It's just so much fun because me being a woman, you know, a lot of them are like, you know, the, the world of men and contractors. Yes. Yes. Uh, but and I can... I can talk to them and know exactly their language and what they need that, you know, I'm speaking to their heart and their points mm -hmm. directly now that I'm like, all right, I got you. And I had one guy asked me a couple days ago, he's like, um, how did you know my business so quickly? I was like, what do you mean? He goes, um, everything you just described is me and my business to it tea he goes mm -hmm. and we've been on the phone for 20 minutes I'm like I'm good at what I do Thanks. yeah <laughs> it's like because you're my you're my client like, right and to me you know I'm able to be a part of their journey and growing their business and making sure that they're making the kind of money that they want to because I also had told a guy the other day I'm like dude you're losing money on these kinds of projects so you need to extend these now Mm -hmm. You need to focus on this instead. And now his financial projections that we've done with all his forecasts for the rest of 2020, he's geared to make an extra 35% in profit this year. Nice. Which is huge for some people. I mean, yeah. who wouldn't That's want, huge. who wouldn't want that kind of money coming in? I would. <laughs> yeah, <me Yeah>. <laughs> so that's amazing. Um, so what kind of, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's dealing with a bad client situation right now? Don't, don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. Cause that's one thing that I had to work on too is know that, you know, they're not coming after me personally. Um, and take it as a learning experience. Don't let it hinder you. Don't let it keep you back. Just know that it, it was something that happened, but it's not something that's going to keep you down you now have the opportunity to move forward and use it as fuel to better yourself and your business and know that, you know, you do deserve those good clients and that those good clients are coming to you. So don't let it keep you in the trenches. people. That is great advice. So, Cause yeah, I'm one of those. I take it all personally too. Like, they don't like me. No. It, it took me a little while, honestly, to, to realize, you know, they're not coming after me personally, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's just, that's, it's them. <laughs> so, well, good. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Like I said, we'll link it, we'll link all your websites. So any contractors are out there and <laughs> then, yeah, they can come and find you easily. Um, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful to be here. <laughs>